want us to talk about Bible basics. You know, a lot of times uh, we we do we have teaching and we have preaching that's that's quite uh, it's quite in depth or very systematic in Bible study. Um, but as I was preparing yesterday, and as I have been preparing for the last few weeks, uh, a series that the Lord has put on my heart for us, uh, I really felt impressed to to begin with something like this. So this week and next week, I'll be speaking about Bible basics. And I'm going to be talking about how to get the most from your Bible in six steps. Very simple, how to get the most from your Bible in six steps. I'm not talking about a special Bible study system. I'm not talking about um, this special way you can do this and you can do that and you need all of these translations. This is very basic and very simple, but it's something that's good for all of us. It's a good reminder for those of us who've been Christians for a while. And it's a great foundation, especially for those of us that are younger in the Lord or some of us who are just, you're just coming to the Lord or you may be a new believer. And this is what the Lord has put on my heart for us for these next two weeks. So it will be, it will be very, very simple but I trust that the Lord will bless it to our lives and to our hearts. Have you started your Bible reading plan for the year? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Now, I'm not going to put anybody on the spot this morning. Um, so if you haven't started yet, I trust that the message this morning will encourage you. But uh, some of us have not started yet. Some of us started and we got really busy and we stopped, right? Yes. I understand that. Or you haven't completely stopped, but you're now about eight days behind <laughs> or, or, or something like that. So this is to encourage you and it encourages me as well. I'll be really honest with you. In my own Bible reading over Chinese New Year, we were doing a lot of different things, and I got out of, out of my habit and out of my pattern, and I'm a few days behind also. So, you, thank you, Jean. I appreciate it. You and I are a few days behind together. Um, so, I want us to, to we're going to look at this this morning and receive some encouragement. Um, I got the foundation for this as I was preparing yesterday. This actually, this is not from me originally, the, the, the very basics, just the six. But as I was looking at it preparing, the Lord really touched my heart. And it's actually from um, an English, an Anglican bishop from way, 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 way back when, who was, in, who was encouraging young believers in his church. And he said, this is what you can do. And as I prepared, I thought, well, Lord, this is for us as well. So the basics of it, the six steps are, um, I, I don't need, they, the book didn't even mention who, who, what his name was or whatever, but as I looked at it and prepared, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. So I'd like us to look at this and the other scriptures and the other things are going to be, that we'll be adding to it. Um, the, the Lord helped me as I was preparing yesterday. So I want us to talk about the Word of God this morning and how we can get the most from our Bibles. Because we have, you know, if we were really, really honest and we didn't care what people thought about us and about our Christian walk, we do though, don't we? We want people to think we're really great and we've got it all together. But if we were really, really honest and we talked about how the Bible is part of our lives, perhaps a lot of us would say, I'm very iffy in my Bible reading. Or we would say, I hardly read the Bible at all. Or we would say, well, I really, I just have a little devotional book and I just read a verse at night and that's, and that's about it. And some of us might even say, well, I don't really read the Bible at all. I listen to the Bible or I hear the Bible when I come to church on Sundays and I know I should, but I don't. And I think as we look at this this morning, the Holy Spirit has something to speak to our hearts. So I trust as our hearts are open, He will speak to us. And uh, I want us to talk about it in this way because... Many of us come from a Bible background. By the way, this is not a Bible, it's a notebook. Um, I have my Bible on here right now. Um, but uh, I think a lot of us, because of our religious backgrounds, we come to the Bible actually with some sort of superstitious ideas, don't we? Uh, I was with Pastor Renee and Sister Bridget and some of, some of us uh, Friday night um, celebrating somebody's birthday on the board who's a lot older now than he was and it's not it's not brother Stephen so you know who it is 
<laughs> so we were sitting around, we were celebrating, uh, just having a good time together and eating some delicious food that Sister Bridget had prepared, and we were talking about this. And uh, Pastor Renee told a story from his, from his youth, long before he was a, a Christian, and he said he and, his, he and Bridget were backpacking through Canada, and he said somebody gave him, was it a Bible or a New Testament? He gave him a New Testament. They were backpacking, so they were hiking. So you've got, those of you who hike and backpack, you know how heavy it gets, right? So you want to, you want to go as light as possible. So here is Pastor Rene, not religious at all, and very, very far from God, but somebody gave him a New Testament. And instead of saying, don't want that because it's more weight and I'm not going to read it, he said he ne didn't read it at all, but it was like, good lucky, you know? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And so he stuck it in his backpack and he kept it all the way through the hiking as they were hiking through the, through the mountains of, of Canada as well. And we laugh at that, but a lot of times we are somewhat similar in our approach to the Bible as well, aren't we? Um, I spoke with someone some years ago Who's who's uh, was married and the partner, uh, the part one was a Christian. The other person was the other. The partner was not a Christian. I'm going to keep it in they, so you don't know if it's male or female. But anyhow, um, and uh, they the one person who was not a Christian was having nightmares and having trouble sleeping at night. And both of them, one was following the Lord, one had a religious background, but really did not have was religious but no relationship with God. And so the one partner who was a Christian said, well, come to church with me. No, 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 I don't, want to go to, I don't want to go to church. Well, read the Bible. No, 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 I don't want to read the Bible. Well, pray and ask God to help you. No, 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 I don't want to pray. Uh, but didn't, didn't want to have nightmares and had a religious background. So one night the partner had gone on into the bedroom and was, was going to sleep before the Christian partner was. And the Christian partner walked into the room and the lights were, all, were there was just a little lamp on already. And, and the, the partner was asleep in the bed like this, lying on, lying on their back. And they had a Bible like this over their heart, like this, <laughs> sleeping, clutching the Bible in their hands on their heart as some sort of good luck charm. You know, if I'm holding a Bible over my heart, I will be okay. I, I, I won't have nightmares. I won't, nothing's gonna happen to me. I will be, I'll be, I'll be safe. I'll be protected. And we laugh about that, but brothers and sisters, a lot of people look at the Word of God that way. And I want to be really honest with you. You don't have to raise your hands this morning, but some of you may look at the Word of God a little bit in the same way as well, right? It may be important to you in your bedroom, even if you don't read the Bible. Maybe you have a Bible by your bed, though you don't read it. Or maybe in your home, you have a Bible in your home, and it's important that there's a Bible in your home, but you don't read it. Well, the Word of God does us no good. I don't want to upset or offend anyone. I just want to tell you the truth this morning. The Word of God seated, sitting there on the shelf or beside your bed or placed over your heart at night does nothing for your life, adds nothing to your life. The Word of God must become part of our lives to make a difference in our lives. The Word of God must enter our heart and our thoughts if it's going to bring about a change. And so that's why I'm talking about this for this week and next week as well. We're just going to be really casual. You know, I've told you that a few times. We're just going to talk as we did when we were talking about fasting. I want us to look at some things from the Word of God. That person thought that the Word of God was going to protect him because it was over, it was over their hearts, but it did nothing. It did nothing. And yet, when we look at the Word of God, we have wonderful, wonderful promises about the Word of God, don't we? And all of us, if we were to think, especially those of us that have been Christians for a while, we can think of wonderful verses that talk about the Word of God. Can you think of some right now? If you just paraphrase it, that's okay. But can you think of some of the promises and some of the assurances that we have in God's Word about the Word of God? Can you think of some? Okay, what is it, Sister Lisa? Okay, we sang that this morning, didn't we? 
the song that we sang this morning. That's a wonderful, wonderful song, and it is a song form of Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, and in that area. Um, what are some other, what are some other, some of you that are saying, huh, I don't know that one. Go check your Bibles. It's a great one. What are some other promises or verses about the Word of God? Anybody else? Okay, what is Joshua 1.9? Okay, be strong. Oh, she's got it memorized. Okay, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. A little bit later this morning, we're going to look at Joshua 1 8. And Joshua 1 8, that comes just before this great verse about be strong and courageous and I will be with you, Joshua 1 8 talks about the Word of God. So we'll look at that just a little bit later. Anybody else? How about from 2 Timothy? Paul talked a lot about the Word of God, right? Can you think of from 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17? All Scripture is. Okay. It is, if you're looking at the King James, it is uh, uh, given by inspiration of God, but I love the newer translation. It is what, Pastor Renee? It's breathed by God. It's God-breathed. Let's look at that in slide one. This is a... By the way, I called Pastor Renee last night about 8 o'clock. As you look at this Scripture, I said, Pastor Renee, I'm sending you something. Will you look at it? Will it work? because you know he's the one that does PowerPoints and all these things. And so this is my, one of my first forays into it. And we look at 2 Timothy. He says, yeah, it'll work. Do this, do this, change this, add this, uh, make it larger, stretch it. Now click on this, and after about half an hour, we finally got this. So thank you, Pastor Renee. <laughs> look at 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. This is New Living Translation. Shall we read it together? This is one of my favorite, and it should be one of your favorite verses, the, this passage about the Word of God. Let's read it together. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Wow, we could have three sermons just on, on those two verses, couldn't we? How wonderful. We'll just keep it up and just keep looking at it for a while. Think about that. I want to challenge you this morning. Here's, one of, here's some of the promises, one of, some of the assurances about the Word of God. Um, in the Word of God, there are some of you I know that you are thinking about and praying about, God, what do you have for me to do? Yes? You want to serve the Lord. You want to be more involved in ministry. And you are praying. I want to challenge you this morning. You should be praying, and prayer is good, but prayer is not enough if you want to be involved in the work of God. What does Paul say here? He uses the Word of God to do what? To prepare and equip you. You're His people, right? I'm His people. <laughs> to do every good work. So if the Word of God is not part of your life, you're not going to be prepared and equipped to do what God has for you to do. And Ephesians 2.10, we, we don't have it this morning, but you can look later in your own. The Bible says that in Ephesians 2.10 that He has prepared in advance good works for us to do. Long before you became a Christian, God knew you were going to answer his call. God knew you were going to respond to His love. God knew that you were going to be here this morning. God knew you were going to be working in Hong Kong or China or Germany or wherever and that there would be opportunities for you and doors for you. And God said, I've got good works just for this person to do. This person is especially, is just right. But to accomplish and to do those good works, the Word of God has to be part of our lives. So we see this and in Malawi too. Amen. She, she thought she was going to get away from it. She was looking that way. God uses His Word to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. A little bit later, uh, the series that I'll be starting on in a few weeks is uh, Standing Firm in God. And we'll be looking at Ephesians 6 and the armor of God and how do we stand and how do we fight and how do we defend ourselves and all of that. And this is a good foundation for that. But we've got to be equipped and prepared and God uses His Word that's one of the things that he does to prepare us for what he has for us. And it's, I look at this, and it says all scripture is inspired, and this word is a special word. It's different from the word 
that we use in the world, like, oh, he's really inspired. Wow, he's just, he's really inspired to write that song. She was really inspired to paint that, that picture. This word is a special word. It comes only from God, and it means to breathe. And it means it's God-breathed. I, I love that. You know, we, when we think about it in that way, we, we would take the, the Bible a lot more seriously, wouldn't we? And it's useful to teach us what is true. It starts off with all Scripture, and I'm not going to go in depth on all these verses because we have a lot further to go this morning. But you know, I think back, have you ever read passages of the Bible and you've thought to yourself, Oh, boring. You ever? I have. I have. And I read through these lists of, and you know, in some places, and the tribe of whatever gave 140,000 whatever, and the tribe of whatever, and my impulse is just as zoom, skate on over it and keep on going. But Paul says it's all inspired by God and it's useful in some way. And I say, how can that be useful? Is that what you say? That's what I say. But you know what? It's just because that particular portion is not needed yet. When I was a child, I would go into my father's tool shed. And those of you that know my dad know that in, in addition to being a pastor and a missionary and a farmer uh, and a, you know all sorts of things, he was also just a, he was a handyman. He could, he, he could do anything around the farm, anything around the house, and most things on an engine. And I would go into his tool shed and I would look around his tool shed. Hammers, I know. Saws, I know. Screwdrivers, a flathead and a Phillips head and all of that. I know what those, I know what it's used for. But there were some tools, I would look at it and I had no idea what it, what it would be useful for. I looked at it and I thought, what is that? If it were up to me, I'd look at it, I'd just throw it away. I can't do anything with it. But it's just not the right opportunity. And my dad knew. And he would say, no, 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 leave that alone. The next time this, 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 and this happens, I'm gonna, I'll need that tool at that time. And so when we come to the scripture, I encourage you. We come and we look at the word of God and we think, how can that be helpful? How can that be useful? Don't give up on it. Don't say, oh, forget that. But keep on walking with the Lord. And as you take in his word, you will come to the place where the Holy Spirit will say to you in your inner being at some point, remember that verse. And at that point, when it's needed, you will say, oh, now it's useful. Now I understand. And it will bless you and help you and strengthen you. Amen? Amen. But that's not the only one. Oh, okay. What are some other verses? Can you think of thy word is a about our feet. Okay, let's look at the next slide. Psalm 119, 105. This is from New Living, uh, uh, Psalm 119, 105. Maybe I have them mixed up. Slide two. There we go. Your word, New Living Translation again, is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. What a wonderful promise. What a wonderful promise. This does not mean, oh, I need to know what to do. <laughs> Although we sometimes, we have, how many of you have ever used the Bible that way? <laughs> when I was young and didn't know any better. That's what I did. That's not what it means. But what it means is as we take it into our lives. What a wonderful promise of the Lord. Okay, what's another one? We just saw Hebrews 4, 12 and 13, slide 3. For the word of God is what? Alive and powerful. It's alive and powerful. And look at what it does. Oh, it works deep in our hearts and it works deep in our lives. And we have many, many more wonderful assurances from the Word of God. But brothers and sisters, these wonderful things that we're reading about the Word of God will not work in our lives if the Bible sits on the table or if it sits by our bed or we have it on the shelf. We've got to take it into our lives. And that's what I want to talk about. So I want to consider this morning, slide four, six steps that will help us get the most from this wonderful, wonderful book, the Bible. God has given it to us for our daily lives. 
I want to challenge you this morning, depending on your church background. Some of you this morning are looking at the Word of God, and you may be saying, that's for pastors and priests because I cannot understand it. Uh, Pastor Renee and I know a, a, a young Chinese man. He's not that young anymore. But many, many years ago, I think in the early 90s, he, he was a university student. And he, and maybe in the late 80s, he and some of his friends became, became Christians. This was in the interior of China. There were no other Christians around. None. They had all become Christians. I don't even remember how. And I was talking with him one time about it. And God used him and his wife to prepare teaching notes and to prepare portions of the, of the Bible for a Bible that's called, that is now called, and you're familiar with it, what's it called, Pastor Renee? The Fire Bible. The, you know who it is then, don't you? They translated the whole uh, study notes. They translated all the study notes with, for this Bible that is called, in China, the Fire Bible. And it is welcomed and it is requested more than any other Bible in China. But this young man started out, didn't even know any other Christians, had not gone to a Bible school, didn't have anybody to teach him. And I was talking with him some years ago about how he developed and how he grew. And he just laughed. He said there were about five or six of us. He said, and we met every week. We would meet, I think it was on a Saturday. We would just get together in one of the dorm rooms. And then as they began to grow, they had to get like a hotel room. And he said, we didn't know any better. We just started with Genesis. <laughs> Imagine being a brand new Christian, you start with Genesis. He said, we, and we just started with the Old Testament, because that's the beginning of the Bible. You know, you start with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, whew, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Oh my goodness. You know, sometimes we're such wimps, aren't we? We say, oh no, 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 just give me the Psalms. But they started with Genesis. And he said, we would look at it, we would study it together, and we would say, well, I think this means this. And somebody said, well, I don't know. Don't you think maybe it means this or that? He said, but the Holy Spirit helped us, and the Holy Spirit taught us, and as we studied His Word, we began to grow. And out of that, God brought and produced and developed and prepared and equipped a young man that has been used to bless millions, millions in his home country. In three million in his home country. And that's where it started. So I want to challenge you and encourage you this morning. Don't be put off. Don't say, well, it's too hard for me. It's not. It's not. That's a lie from the enemy to keep you from getting into this book that God has given us to help us grow to help us be strong, to help us to stand, to prepare us to face a world that is an enemy to us, and to help us to make it successfully. Don't believe the lie of the enemy that this Bible is just for those who are educated, or who have a seminary edu uh, a background, or who have all of these degrees in Greek and Hebrew. God's Word is for everyone, and it's for me, and it's for you. I sometimes ask people if they have a Bible, and I've almost never met, at least in Hong Kong, I've almost never met anyone who has given a negative answer, even if they were not churchgoers or religious. And if I were to ask you right now, well, you're all in church, you know, so do you have a Bible? Yes. Probably all of you. How many do you have, Stephen? A lot, right? Many, 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 as do I. Um, I've seldom met people that uh, have said, no, 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 I don't have a Bible. Uh, some of you are praying for a young woman in the U.S. She's about 19 years old. Uh, she was Italian. She was a friend of my brother's, and she was 19. She had never opened the Bible in her life. Her parents were uh, maybe Italian or Sicilian, and I think maybe a Catholic background, but she knew, she, she said, I've never even opened a Bible before. And she got saved about three weeks ago, and so she, she said, I don't have a Bible. And so mom found one of her Bibles, her old Bibles that she had and said, here. And so she started reading, she started reading in John. But what I would say to you, first off, is get a Bible if you, if you don't have one. And then I want to say something else. Because some of you would say, I have a Bible. But what I want to challenge you in is this. Do you have a Bible that you can use? Do you have a Bible that you can read? Do you have a Bible that you can understand? Now, if you love Old English 
uh, not necessarily old, but uh, King James English, let's put it that way, as my dear brother Keith does right here, then get a King James. But honestly, few people would be comfortable reading that, true or not? Thou shalt go down to the valley, and then, thus saith the Lord. Okay? If that, if that speaks to your heart and is the language that your heart pounds, pounds with, then get a King James. But if it's not, get a Bible that you can read. I really mean that. Get a Bible. And, and I know we're laughing about some things, but I'm really serious this morning. Get a Bible you can read. Get one that you can understand. Let me ask you, some of you this morning, what Bible, what Bible do you usually use, those of you that are reading the Bible, what Bible do you usually use for your general Bible reading? Pastor Renee, what do you usually use? Uh, New Living Translation, ESV. Okay, New Living Translation, ESV. Okay, often I'll do just New Living Translation. How many of you do use New Living Translation? Quite a few of us do. Okay, so quite a few of us. What are some other versions that you use? Somebody else. Okay, there we go. The most popular one is the NIV, New International Version. So a lot of people are reading that one, NIV. Somebody else, what's one that you enjoy reading? Anybody? What? Of course, I knew Tony would say that. New American Standard, NASB, okay? And there's an updated, and that one's very accurate, especially for Bibles, when you want to be exact about words. Um, and that one is a little higher as far as language and things like that than New Living Translation, maybe a lot higher. Anybody else? There's a version that you enjoy reading that you are comfortable with? Anyone else? What? Okay, Amplified is another one as well. And a lot of us, a lot of us read Amplified as well. Anybody else? Okay, thank you. Uh, 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 Alistair is a little bit lower church than Keith, and he says New King James Version <laughs> instead of the old King James Version, okay? And the New King James is very beautiful, especially if you're familiar with King James, and that was your church background, and it's much more readable and easier to understand. Some of us like, although it's a, it's a paraphrase, the Phillips translation, uh, J.B. Phillips. I really like that one, but it's a paraphrase. The most important thing is get a Bible that you can read. Get a Bible that you're not afraid to write in. Get a Bible that you're not afraid to put in your backpack. Put it under your arm. Put it in your purse. Take it with you where you go. Not a special one that is whoo and has to sit up on the shelf. The family Bible that weighs 15 pounds and has the record of all the family births for the last 300 years. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get real familiar with that one. Get a Bible that you can read. Now, because we're in Hong Kong, some of, you, some of us are not native English speakers as well. So I want to say something else this morning. You get a Bible. If English is difficult for you, get a Bible in your language or get an easy-to-read Bible. Get an easy-to-read Bible rather than if you may say, NIV is too hard for me, NASB is too difficult for me. Get an easy-to-read Bible. And some of us might say, oh, yes, but that's too simple. It needs to be... Start where you are. Get a Bible. And if you have any questions about it, you come see Pastor Renee or me at the end of the, uh, end of the service. Get a Bible that you can. Now, that you can read and that you're willing to write in. So step one, whoops, sorry. Okay. Step one, read it through. Okay. And I'm going to keep it really simple. It's just going to be, it's going to be six short phrases. We're not going to get to six phrases this morning. So the first one is read it through. And you say, oh, Pastor Jennifer, do you mean I have to read from Genesis to Revelation? No. That's not what this means. But what it does mean is this. It means start reading. That's all it means, okay? Start reading. It's just as simple as that. And we look at this, and you know, some of us, let's be honest, I'm using this as a Bible. I should have brought a Bible this morning, pretend it's a Bible. We look at the Bible, and we're so, it's so daunting to us, isn't it? Isn't it? It's like, it's so big. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. I don't understand it. And because of that, we push it away and we say, well, I can't get it. I'll just listen to Pastor Renee and Pastor Jennifer on Sunday mornings. But if you do that, again, I want to challenge you. You are believing a lie of the enemy that they will understand it better than I. They will explain it. I challenge you to get a Bible and just start reading. Don't be discouraged by names you can't pronounce. Don't... Who cares? If you're at home reading it, who cares how you pronounce 
Abishag, you know? <laughs> Although I think that is how you pronounce her name, Abishag. Okay, who is Abishag? <laughs> ah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look it up, you can find, you, and I'll tell you how to spell it later, but not right now. Let's go on to more important things. Don't worry about names that you can't pronounce. Don't worry about things that you, they say, well, this is hard for me. You start in an area where you can. A lot of people recommend starting where? There you go. The Gospel of John, if you've not read the Bible before, is a good place to start. But you know what? The Gospel of John is actually not very easy. There are a lot of concepts that are not easy. Can you think of a Gospel that's easier for starting? There you go. The Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark is called the Gospel of Action. Stories. Things happening. Start there. That's a great place to start if you've never really started reading the Bible, if you've never read the Bible very much before. Start, where, start with the Gospel of Mark. Um, I spoke with someone recently when I was challenging people to start Bible reading this year, and it's somebody in Lighthouse, and you know what the person told me? They said, when you were preaching and you were talking about those, she said, I had been thinking that I should read this, and she said, but then you said something, and I knew that was really the Lord speaking to me, and she was, she feels that she's been prompted to read the Bible in 90 days, which is heavy duty. Um, it's about half an hour of Bible reading a day. And the last time I talked with her, she was so happy. She said, I'm about 15 days ahead already. She said, I've already finished. And she'd finished most of the Old Testament already, and she was so excited. And one of the things she said was, she said, I can already tell a difference in my life as I have been saturating myself in the Word of God. Now, when you hear that, I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you to be encouraged. Don't compare yourself to somebody who perhaps has the time and the schedule to do that type of reading. But you need to start. If you are reading one chapter a day, you say, well, I can read one chapter a day. Okay, start with one chapter a day. But start. That's the most important thing. Read it through. I will tell you this. Usually, I can tell they don't have to tell me anything about their private devotional life. I can usually tell if a Christian is not reading his or her Bible regularly. I can tell. And Pastor Renee can tell too. And I don't mean this to condemn or, conv or I hope it convicts, but the person who is not taking the Word of God into his or her life is losing one of the most valuable resources that God has given us to grow. And the person that is not taking the Word of God on a regular basis into his or her life, you know what, you know what the life will be like? It will be up and down and up and down and up and down and down and up a little bit and down and you'll go from week to week barely making it during the week but getting a little bit pepped up on Sunday because you've heard a little bit of the Word of God. The Christian who's not taking the Word of God into their lives will have a hard time with self-control. The person who's not taking the Word of God into their lives will have no confidence in their Christian testimony or Christian witness. There won't be any strength to tell other people about Jesus because their own lives are so wobbly and so floppy. And I'm not saying this as a, you're a bad Christian. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is this. God has given us His Word whereby we might grow. 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3. Slide, numbers, uh, slide number 6. Peter, who had been commissioned by the Lord. Remember what, remember what Jesus said to Peter? when they were by the lake and he was going to leave soon. Remember what Jesus said to Peter? He said, Peter, feed my sheep. And then he meant lambs and older ones and the younger ones as well. So it's no surprise that Peter says at this point, much, much, much later in his life, what does he say? He's talking to Christians, not just baby Christians. We sometimes look, and look at this verse and we think, oh, it's for baby Christians. No. Peter was talking to Christians of all ages, of all spiritual ages. And what he said to them was this, Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk of the Word. That's why I've, I've put it, uh, uh, I've done this because I added that, but in some translations this is included. But it's the milk of the Word. Why? Why? Because I said so? No. Who cares what I say? But Peter gives a wonderful reason for it. He says, so that... 
you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. And there's so much we could say about this, but I want to just point out a few things. This is not an in-depth study of all these verses, as you know I like to do. We're, 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 going, we're moving quickly because we're going to look at these, six, at these six things. But when we look at what Peter says here, I, I was so strongly reminded of what happened a few years ago in China. Do you remember what happened a few years ago in China with the tainted milk, uh, with the tainted milk scandal? And uh, children, babies, newborn infants, instead of, uh, instead of receiving mother's milk, breast milk, they were being fed formula. And suddenly, and I think, it's, I think it was first noticed maybe in Anhui province, one of the poorest provinces in China. And some of the babies, they started out fine and strong, and as they began to drink this milk formula that looked like milk and tasted like milk, they began to grow weaker and weaker and weaker. There was abnormal development. I don't know how many died. And in the end, at least up to now, I think I read last night some statistics. Over 300,000 babies have had abnormal development because of this. What was wrong when they began to search and when they began to test the milk powder, they found that to save money, and to pass the tests, they had put what into the milk powder? Melamine. Melamine. This, this, sub, this it, it makes the milk, it makes it test high protein, but in fact, there's no value at all, and in fact, it's harmful. And I was thinking about that. These parents, one child, loving their child, feeding the child in a way they thought, this child will go strong, grow strong, but instead, the milk was not pure. And instead of helping and in strengthening, it caused the other. And I was, I was thinking about that last night. I was thinking what a hope and what an encouragement you and I have when we come to the Word of God. You heard Panina this morning talk, and, and I thought the Lord brought it all together this morning because Panina didn't know what I was going to speak about this morning. The very first song, How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in His excellent Word. And when you and I come to the Word of God, what Peter says and what we're reminded is this. The Word of God is pure. It is, uh, some translations say what? Sincere. In other words, it's not mixed with anything else. You can come to the Word of God, brothers and sisters, and there's nothing in it that's going to harm you. You can come to the Word of God and take it into your life, and nothing in it is going to cause abnormal growth. You can come to the Word of God, and when you come with a right heart, with the help of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be led off into a cult. You're not going to be sidetracked. You're not going to be out of balance. You're going to come to the Word of God, and as you take the Word of God into your life, not seated on a shelf, not lying on a table, but bringing it in, you're just reading it, it's going to bring you health and strength and stability, and confidence, and hope, and you will be able to stand. And this is God's promise to everyone. Do you think that these things that we're talking about, it's just for the pastors? It's just for the teachers? No, it's for every one of us. We all need to grow strong. We all need to learn how to stand. We all need to know how to, how to fight against the enemy when he comes against us. We all need to know, how can I forgive someone who's not easy to forgive? How can I get bitterness out of my heart where it's been growing? Through the Word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we can come. And Peter says, you can count on it. You don't have to be worried. I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. You understand. You don't have to be worried there's something evil or bad or this or that. It's not man's doctrine. It's not people's ideas. It's breathed whoo, by God for you and for me. And Peter says, so read it through. Peter says, like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk. Why? Not because the pastors say so. Not because there's a Bible reading program, but so that you will what? Grow into what? A full experience of salvation. Are you saved right now? Yes. Praise the Lord. But there's more. There's a greater experience of salvation than you have yet experienced. Did you know that? Now, can you be a Christian and not read the Bible? Well, you probably can. You can. 
But you know what type of Christian you'll be, don't you? And Peter says to you and to me, crave this milk so that you can experience fully everything God has for you as you grow up in salvation. And brothers and sisters, there are things that God has for you, for you, for you, for each one of you, that until you begin to take in the Word of God and until you begin growing, you're not going to experience. Sometimes, do you look at other Christians and you envy them just a little bit? You think, wow, they're so strong in the Lord. How do they know that about God? They have such a close relationship with Him. How are they? It just seems like, oh, in worship, they are just, oh, loving the Lord. And me, I'm just as dry as the, a, a desert. And, and we go through times like that. But I want to challenge you. Don't be jealous of other Christians in the wrong way. But look at other Christians. And I can tell you this. People that you look at that you admire spiritually will have the Word of God as a steady diet in their Christian lives. Amen? Amen. 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 And Peter says one other thing there. He says, now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness, and I like that expression as well. You've had a taste. Is, do you know all there is to know about God? No. Have you fully experienced everything in God? No. But have you had a taste? Yes. You've had a taste. Was it a good taste? Yes. yes, it was. It was a good taste. And some of you that said, well, I have, uh, I'm not sure about that. Are you born again yet? Have you entered into a relationship with God? Think about the taste of the Lord that you have at the beginning. Think back just for the beginning. Do you remember that? Do you remember when you first heard the gospel? When you first heard the good news about God, that He loved you? And you probably thought, I can't believe that. In fact, you may have thought, I don't believe in God. Some of us thought that, right? We thought, there's no God. And then somebody told you, or you read, or you heard, there is a God, and He loves you. No, He can't love me. I'm too bad. My life is too much of a mess. And He cares about you. No, 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 no. He can't care about me. Look how many people are in the world. I'm nobody. He can't care about me. And then you had a taste of His love, yes, and of His care. The Lord is good. And Peter says to you and to me, you've tasted, you've seen, the Lord is good. Now keep on, keep on tasting. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's time to stop. Step one. <laughs> step one. So all of my props, I'll bring them back next week. But step one, start reading. Start reading. And keep on reading. I've brought back all of the Bible reading plans, and I'm going to ask Melrose just to put them out at the table again. Start somewhere. If you took some of these Bible reading plans and you took them home and you folded them up in your Bible, which you're not reading up on your desk, go home and pull them out. If you haven't gotten one, who cares if it's not January 1? Start! You don't have to wait till January 1. So, well, I missed it this year. I'll wait till 2015 to start reading the Bible. <laughs> Start, start, and ask the Lord to help you. Taste and see that the Lord is good, and see the difference in your life. Amen? Amen. Let's close in prayer. Amen.